Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and it's a new month, so there's a couple of new Olight product updates and new products. Um, and I'm going to start with this update. This is the Olight Freeze 2. Um, I did a video earlier on this one uh, with the carbon fiber scales. It's got the bare stainless, same 154 cm in the new one. But what they've got here is a more tactical knife. So you might think of this more like a boardroom, you know, office, etc. This is more, you know, the tactical uh, lots of places you might want something a little bit more subdued. Um, but this actually has uh, uh, aluminum scales as an option now, rather than the copper or the carbon fiber on, on the first version of the three, the Freeze 3. Um, and this set uses a 6061T6 aluminum on the scales. And that's exactly the same aluminum that Benchmade uses on their scales, uh, say on this Striker. Um, the Striker is an auto knife uses 154 cm steel, which is exactly the same um, as what the Olight O-Knife has, the Freeze 2. And on this one, they've got a black coating, and Benchmade's coatings are notorious for coming off. Here's an earlier striker, and just simple use wears that. Um, they've upgraded a little bit, like here's the bug out. This one's holding up pretty well. They've got kind of this gray blade coating. I'm not sure how they're doing it. Um, if that's a Cerakote, but this doesn't use Cerakote. This actually uses what, what's called titanium PVD, or physical vapor deposition, which is a way of actually laying it down, you know, at the atomic lay layer in an extremely sophisticated way you're not going to do in your garage. Um, and it's incredibly durable. Um, so uh, I have had this one use this a bunch, this Robot, Roberto 3, Roboto 3, which is uh, one that I did a video on earlier. It's got the same coating on it, and it actually, you know, sometimes I see marks, and then I wipe it, and the mark goes away. Um, I'm, I'm impressed, but it's a more expensive, more labor-intensive way of building things. Um, also, they've maintained the liner lock, and the liner lock on this really seems dialed in as far as both the, the smoothness and the amount of bite in order to uh, drop the knife. Sometimes these get too big and it's, they're easy to deploy or they're in the way. You know, you really feel it. This one you don't feel even, you know, when you're using the knife, but it's plenty big so you're not fighting trying to wedge your fingernail down inside there to, to close the knife. Liner locks are incredibly strong, incredibly simple, but they often do require a little bit of hand finishing and that's kind of you're, you're able to see that there on that exposed metal because you have to make sure that they line up. There's no play here. You know, they don't rattle back and forth. And this liner, um, if you can see in there, fits in far enough to safely lock the blade, but not so far that it risks going out the other side. Um, here's a Gerber. This is actually a frame lock. It's the same idea, but it uses essentially the outside scale to be bent. But you notice this big ramp here. This is to protect you from pushing on that. Um, so I like the simplicity. And also look how, look at the, how low that profile, even though they jimped it, um, that's a lot of force that you're trying to put on with just this tiny little shelf here. Um, you know, you can do it, but it's not easy and, and it's near impossible with gloves on. So anyway, that's what they've got going here with the Freeze 2, new scales, and that excellent blade coating, maintaining the 154 cm. Um, and these are just silky smooth to operate. Um, and it's a great size. This is a, it's a full-size folding knife. Yes, you can get bigger ones, like here's this big old buck, which is hilarious. Um, piece of junk, I think. Sorry, buck. <laughs> it's been back to their factory twice. Um, and it's still, they, they've snugged it up. I mean, look at that, the way it moves or doesn't move, but it's got all kinds of wiggle up in the front and it's USA made. You know, in fact, you know, Buck isn't terribly far from where I am, but uh, just kind of a letdown. But anyway, these, uh, I'm impressed. Olight's nailing it. Olight also has, uh, you know, their, their turnaround to new designs is just phenomenal. So... Um, you know, I was impressed with this, you know, as far as the look and the feel, and then to have another option that's a little bit more subdued, that's great. Uh, let's go to the Arkfeld here. That's another new thing that's basically cosmetic. Um, what they've done, first of all, there is a new, uh, or the ability to get it in two different temperature flavors. Um, 
You can get the uh, get it now in cool white and neutral white. It's got a thousand lumen output, same as the old one. It's got the laser uh, and it's got the light, but they've done this kind of pinwheel gunmetal gray look, which is really stately. It looks professional. So sometimes, you know, the, the candy colored ones, they're great, they're fun, but you know, standing up in a boardroom, you might want something, you know, to, you know, as you're power pointing your way through the afternoon, using something a little bit more uh, stately. But also with the uh, um, kind of the stately look, if you think about maybe uh, like the Secret Service, what if they were driving around in those candy colored bright blue and yellow Toyota FJs when they first came out? Um, you know, they almost look like cartoons. So I'm glad that they're, they're working on something more than just black, you know, solid colors, but now textured colors. That's the update. Uh, really there besides the light um, because this is a, an outstanding light the more I use it the more um, I'm impressed the simple design I do use the laser a lot for both uh, astronomy for highlighting things and of course presentations but um, the ability to um, first of all easily cycle through the common lights light amounts or to fire up turbo if I want or, you know, strobe warning, I can go to that. And what I really like is being able to hit their moonlight mode. You know, there's a little tiny bit of light coming out of there. 100% of the time, you know, be able to hit it exactly. You know, not accidentally cycle off of something. And um, that it's accessible, you know, straight away. I really, I really think that's important because a lot of times that's all I want is that moonlight. So how do I get that? So, uh good on the Arkfeld and that that nice smooth that lighting is just hilarious that they spent the time making a smooth kind of transition there um, I think they are giving away these small lights with each order on their new sale last one here is this wyvern uh, this is a super light 300 lumen bike light it's a it's a plastic coating a or plastic shell ABS possibly uh, USB-C uh, charging there um, 300 lumens is not a lot, but this is really designed as more of a commuting light. You could think of it as a city light where there's already plenty of ambient light and you're doing more signaling, or a daytime light. Road biking, um, it's almost essential to have a daytime light, and having something lightweight like this is great. Uh, this one comes with a rubber strap. This is a common way of attaching lights, but I like that for a light like this because sometimes I'll put putting it on my seat post uh, backwards or on, an, on the frame. Um, in order to uh, basically signal the cars behind me. Um, I'm not using it to light up my way. And, uh, you know, if you're riding on the right side of the road in America anyway, um, people are going to be coming up behind. So that's a good signal there. You can get small lights. A lot of people use little tiny ones, but they take button, uh, button cells or recharge, but don't stay on very long. This will run on a low setting up to 13 hours. So that's plenty for... for uh, a full day of riding if you've got something like that going but anyway that's a new one uh and it's got the they're, they're saying the lockout as well although you know it does take a little bit to turn the thing on i don't know if that's gonna be as important you're not carrying it in your pocket uh cycle through the different settings it does have a memory to go back it's a good one anyway so those are the Olight updates. And with that, Doc out.